the comic spot comic spot that's where this army veteran i know i'm gangster this this army veteran do i have lipstick i do they call it bleeding your lipstick bleeds anyway this army veteran is vetting out veterans of comedy here and today we have one for you i've known him quite a while as he calls it for a minute now on facebook yeah. Mario Zapata is here. Wave to everybody, Mario. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me, Linda. You bet. Thanks for taking the time to do this. Oh, my gosh. Mario can be found, and we'll, we'll repeat this. He's on Instagram. He's Mario Z Comedy. And on Twitter, he is I am Mario Z. He's on here today, so we can get to know him a little because this coming week, he's going to be at Jack Slammy's show, and I want to help promote it. I want people to get out there by the droves. What else? What I'm going to drone on about it so people go out in the droves. Welcome to the stage, Mario Zapata. Woo! Hey, glad to be here, everybody. So what's the deal with airline food? <laughs> <laughs> Mario, first I want you to plug the heck out of your show then we'll get to know you a little and we'll go back to the show all in 10 minutes sure uh so the show is going to be at chonkless cantina at 9 p.m on wednesday uh jack slammy is the one who's running it and right now he's the only person who's putting on shows like live shows here in vegas so i mean if you're sick and tired of being stuck at home haven't had anything to do if you're bored i mean even if like even if you don't like me Come out and support the one room that is still allowing comics to do what they what they're meant to do uh, on stage, perform for a live audience. And they've got half price wings uh, and cheap beer. I don't have the address like immediately on me, but uh, it is Chancla's Cantina. Cantina. That's C H A N C L A S Cantina. And uh, every Wednesday night, Jack Slammy's still putting on comedy shows. So make sure you go out and support, especially if you're a fan of comedy. 3246 East Desert Inn Road. There we go. It's the most, it. most amazing place ever. Yeah, the food there is fantastic. It is. And the service, they come to your table. You don't have to stand at the bar. Right. Yeah. Right. So tell me about the show that you're going to be on. There's other people on the show with you. Well, Ty Rivera is going to be headlining the show, and everybody loves Ty Rivera. Um, he's probably the, uh, I don't know how, what, how we, what his preferred pronoun is, but he's either the king or queen of sass, whichever, <laughs> <laughs> whichever one he decides to, to pick, but, um, he's hilarious and there are going to be, there are going to be some other comics on there. I think Mike Krasner is also going to be there and, um, and Chris, uh, I can't, I don't have the name on me. Like I said, I'm in, I'm in the car. So, um, but, uh, there's going to be, I think four comics on the show. And um, each comic usually gets to do at least 12 minutes on Slammy's shows. So that means that you're going to get to see a pretty good amount of material from everybody. It's enough time for you to get to like them before they piss you off or offend you. Yes. And I love the venue. You walk in. It's kind of like a biker hangout. And there's usually like a couple different crowds of bikers that don't, they're not there together, but they're not dueling. It's not like two gangs. Right. It's, you know. If they get along, two different biker groups. There's we're lots all of under bikes the same, outside. We're all under the same quarantine. Yeah, we're all in that bar together. Yeah. Yeah. And it's fun. You know, and a lot of comics that aren't performing go there just to watch. Right, right. So it's a good, it's a good atmosphere. Yes, I love it there. So let's get to know you a little bit. Where'd you grow up? How'd you find out you're funny? Um... Well, I was born in Peru, and we moved to the States when I was three, so I'm about as whitewashed as you can be, but I still speak fluent Spanish. Um, let's see. I, uh, I've always kind of been a class clown. I uh, got in trouble a lot in high school for talking in class, laughing in class, making fun of substitutes, it, it was, I, but I never thought of it as like a career. My parents always told me that I needed 
you know, a job with a desk and a 401k and a boss that I hate in order to be a successful adult. And um, actually, comedy wasn't even my first um, my first passion. It was actually music. Wow. Um, I wanted to be I wanted to be a rock star. I wanted panties thrown at the stage. You know, I wanted all of that the whole nine. Um, and then I realized that I wasn't that good of a musician. <laughs> and um, so I started uh, doing like funny songs, like just to entertain myself. And um, a, a comic told me, have you ever thought about doing, doing stand-up comedy? And I thought to myself, you know, no, because with the band, if I make a mistake, I can blame it on one of them and move on. But on stage, if you make a mistake, you have to own it completely. Um, but he eventually wore me down and I gave it a shot. And I found out that I wasn't that great of a comic either. So then I took these two things that I was okay at and I turned it into something that, that's now uniquely mine. So now I do majority musical comedy uh mostly because i understand the comedic timing of music like i can listen to a song and know exactly where the punchline would be whether it's a whether it's a a, a parody song or an original song i know where the punchline should be and then i write outwards from that so if it's at the beginning i write from that punchline on if it's at the end i write building up to that punchline so but that um, i've been working on doing more non-guitar stuff but the, the majority of what I do is mostly musical stuff. I, I just love music. So do you think you, that you can help me understand what you just said about music and punchlines? Okay, so um, every, every well-written song has a, um, an, an emotional flow to it. Like, you know how when um, sometimes it'll start off kind of quiet and then it builds up and then you hit that first chorus and then all the energy comes and then the energy keeps um, you know, up high until the bridge and then it dips a little bit and then you have that big crescendo at the end so this big finish, right? That's most songs. Now, comedy and jokes are essentially the same way. You, you, depending on your comedic style, most people don't come out super high energy unless that's what, they, that's what their stick is. But you wanna start off with, with a way to gauge the audience get them to understand where you're coming from then you ramp up the energy and then you bring it down a little bit and then you you kick it back up with the punchline so each joke is like a song in that it has this emotional flow and people just react innately to that it's not something they even have to think about it's something that they that they just feel so it's when when it comes to writing jokes the way i see it as music is like your words are the notes to the song and you want to come up with like a good harmony something that's easy to follow so that when you start taking them on this emotional journey they can they, they just feel it they just get it wow see i was interviewing somebody in la maya de giorgio and she told okay. me that she writes her jokes with rock music on yeah do you do that too um i don't um for me it's just kind of um like if I sit down and say, I want to write this joke, I have more difficulty with it just because I feel like I'm trying to force the process. Uh, most of my jokes and my songs are, they, they happen more of like at a moment of inspiration. So I'll hear a song on the radio and I'll be like, oh, I know what I can write for that. Or I'll, cause I'm, I'm always thinking about the musical riffs that I have written. So if a topic comes up and I think, oh, it would pair really well with this. I start writing and I can't stop until it's at least done. It may not be fine tuned and perfect, but I have to get the meat of it done because if I try to come back to it later, it always feels like I'm being pretentious. So I always have to just write as much as I can until I mean, either it's done or I burn out from it. And then the, the I mean, the one benefit is that I can practice it at home. I don't need to go to an open mic to practice this. And then once I take it out and it's, you know, as much as I like it, then, you know, it starts to fine tune itself with, um, with, with, uh, in the moment kind of situations, you know, I'll catch myself saying something or somebody will react a certain way. And that's how I end up fine tuning the song. I mean, I have songs that I wrote six years ago that I've actually changed recently just because somebody said something and I'm like, that works so much better. That's amazing. I love this. So I can't wait to see you Wednesday. Likewise. So I would love to have you go back and cause we're, I don't want to keep you while you're in a car. You're probably hot for all I know. Well, we have the AC on, thank goodness. Good. 
Well, let's wrap up. And I would love to have you go back and revisit going to 3246 East Desert Inn Road in Las Vegas this coming week. Tell us the, the day, the time, and, a, and a hype it up a little bit again as a wrap up. It's, it's Wednesday the 22nd. And it's going to be a Chonkless Cantina. Jack Slammy, uh, he, um, his company is called Notorious Comedy. That, that's his, uh, that's the theme. And um, he does it every Wednesday. Ty Rivera is going to be headlining. Um, they, they are practicing social distancing. So if you want to get a good seat, it's best to get there early. But the food is so cheap, you might as well go have dinner and a beer before the, sh before the show. Because, every I mean, it's, it's already been beat to death. But the truth is, the more drinks you have, the funnier the comics will be. So definitely do that. Come and hang out. I mean, quit being stuck at your house. Come out. Absolutely. I got there and there were no tables. And somebody that worked there asked some people if they could condense or move to another area so that three of us older people with masks could <laughs> have a table in a corner. It was very nice of them. They could have said, there's no table. If you want to hear it, go outside. And They're very accommodating. Very, very accommodating. Very accommodating. All night long, we were getting service at the table. Wonderful. Good. Yeah, it was great. So we'll see you there. I'm coming, and I will be there probably to the right of the stage. So look for me. Excellent. I look forward to it. You guys, come on out. It's Wednesday. Yeah, come on out. Sometimes his shows don't start exactly on time. He has No that. comedy show starts on time. Thank you, right? <laughs> so just go with it. You're out there to have a good time. Have a drink. Drink Coca-Cola if you don't drink alcohol. Don't complain and don't come out to get upset. Come out to forget Love your it. problems. Love it. Love it. Everything Linda just said. <laughs> yeah, let's do this. Come on, Vegas. Let's go out and have some fun. Bye, like Mario. It. Thank you. Right, Love bye, you. Linda. Thanks for having me. What's, you, what's the lady's name with you in the car? This is Erica Kuharski. Hi. Hi, Erica also, Kuharski. Also another comic. She's in Vegas. She just moved to Vegas uh, in October from South Dakota. Wonderful. I just moved here in December from Oregon. Excellent. And so we'll have to get together and have coffee and girl talk. And I want to interview you. Okay. Sounds like a plan. And I want to do a full interview of Mario too. So hit me up on Facebook Messenger, you guys. Sounds like a plan. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Linda. Have Bye. a great day. Bye.